Support for Radio Friends comes from Columbia Healthy Smiles, the dental office of husband and wife team, Dr. Batson and Dr. Abe, offering comprehensive and customized care to patients of all ages. Learn more by calling 573-721-9039 or online at www.columbiahealthysmiles.com. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, December the 7th. Many of you know today, Pearl Harbor Day. This is a day that changed everything. The United States Pearl Harbor was bombed and we entered into the war. And Joan Stack uh, is with us today from the State Historical Society. And we're going to deal about uh, some of the things regarding our entry into the war. Yeah, I mean... One of the things that's very special about the State Historical Society of Missouri's art gallery is it isn't just a place where you can see beautiful art. It's also a place where you can learn about our history and maybe understand better how people experienced things like Pearl Harbor, World War II in Missouri at the time. And we have probably one of the best collections of paintings by an artist reacting to those events of any place in the country. And that is a series of 10 paintings dealing with with World War II by the great Missouri artist Thomas Hart Benton that he did in Kansas City right after Pearl Harbor. He immediately started working. He had finished all of them by April of 1942, all of the year of peril. Now, eight of these works are are all about the horrors of war. They're really uh, very disturbing, some of them. Uh, And then two others are about the experience of the soldiers. And I've I've shown you some of those before. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when you when you think about it, here we are. We're in Missouri. Now, I wasn't alive in 1941. I was coming along about four years later. (laughs) But it, it, it happened at Pearl Harbor across the Pacific Ocean. Here we are in the heartland of the United States, but it still it touched everybody and people in different ways. Yeah, and, that's, and what's so interesting about the paintings that Benton is doing, he had been a soldier during World War I, but he is imagining what's happening, but also doing expressionistic images that reflect a kind of a, a national nightmare. Right. And some of these images, uh, they, they're sort of surreal. I mean, they're not like what you usually think of when you think of Thomas Hart Benton. Yeah. And um, right now, for those of you who are watching online or on the PBS station, uh, Paul is holding up a picture called Starry Night. And what's interesting about all three pictures that I brought for you today, they all have these bitterly ironic titles. Yeah. So Starry Night represents a man drowning in the sea, and we see behind him a ship sinking. So the ship has been torpedoed. and. As part of the destruction of the ship, apparently there's been an oil spill, and the sea is on fire. Yeah. So it's a horrific image. And oh, it, it is. And it, it is. And he's the man. The man you can tell is sinking, but he's holding up his hands, yeah. uh, trying to gasp the last bit of air that he can. This is one of the pictures that's on display. Yes, and this introduced the series when uh, Benton first displayed it in New York. Okay. And then here is the next one that I brought for you today is a one of several pictures that represent what Benton and a lot of Americans feared would happen. And that is they feared that the United States would be attacked. Thankfully, we never were. But people in Europe and in Asia were experiencing, you know, fire bombings of their homes. Right, right. And this picture shows a family and uh, the child and the man have been killed. And the woman goes out and sees her dead child and is screaming. And it sort of reminds you in, in its expressionistic quality of monks the scream. It's just this sense of horror. Right. And again, it's it's not realistic exactly because it's sort of stylized, but he really captures the, the intensity of the emotion. And that's what these pictures are kind of yeah. about. They're about the kind of Fear, anxiety, the horror of um, of going to war. Yeah, and you can see it looks. I guess that was their home. It's on fire, and you can see the bombers yeah. flying away now. Yeah. And then this last picture that you 
brought along. This is probably the most disturbing. Yes. Well, now, the I mentioned some images represent things that did happen, like uh, ships were torpedoed. Some represent what we feared would happen. And then he did these allegorical images. And this image is called the Sowers. And it represents a kind of a monstrous figure, a kind of a giant figure. You can't even tell whether it's supposed to be Japanese or German. It sort of has a German uh, hat on, but we're not not really quite sure. It's more like a, a symbol of the kind of brutality of war, the brutality of the Axis powers. And uh, he is a sower. It's called the sower. And what he's doing is sowing skulls into the earth. So the idea that instead of planting seeds of something that would grow, they're planting death. They're creating havoc. And so he, he kind of provides images that speak different types of languages. Right. I can't imagine the turmoil that he was feeling internally when he was creating this these these pieces of artwork. Yeah, I mean, he was 50 years old at the time, and he felt like he couldn't go to war at that age. And I think he really wanted to do something. And he also was very aware that there was a resistance to joining the war in the Midwest. We have a lot of German people with German ancestry here, and they weren't especially thrilled about the United States going to war with Germany. And so he wanted to wake people up to the horror of what was going on. And we already knew some of the horror that was going on in Germany. Germany. We knew about, we may have not known the extent of the Holocaust, but we knew how the Jews were being treated and how they were being exploited. And we also knew some of the horrible things that were going on in Asia. So um, in, in a way, these are pictures that um, are about, we need to fight this war, which I think Benton believed. We need to participate in this war, but not for the glory of it, but to end these wars, to end right. the brutality. There is never glory in going to war. Yeah. Uh, I, in my opinion, it, it, you need to try to avoid it at all costs, but at times it's unavoidable. Yeah. Uh, how long will these will this display be available? Well, this is part of our permanent uh, collection, and because it is such an important collection nationally, these have been borrowed by museums around the country, uh, we have these permanently on display, unless they're on loan, but none of them are on loan right now. So this is kind of one of the treasures of the State Historical Society. In our old building, we couldn't show them all, but now that we're in our new building, we have all of them on display, plus two others that represent the experience of the soldiers, which are also very impressive. Yeah. I, I'm kind of curious, we're almost out of time, but when someone, w another museum wants to borrow, is that a, a big process to go yeah. through? Yeah, because we have to figure out how, some of these paintings are huge. How you're going to so ship gonna them. So you're going to transport yeah. them and all of yeah. that. So yes, we, we go through a long process. It's usually several years in advance. We, do, right. we don't have any loans in process right now, thankfully. We need to talk about that sometime <laughs> in detail. But if people want to come, your hours are? Uh, we're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday. On the weekdays, we're, uh, we, the art gallery opens at 10 and closes at 4.30. On the weekends, we open at 10 and close at 2. Okay. Thank you very much, Joan Stack. Always a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you. State Historical Society. We're out of time. Drop me an email, pepperp.missouri.edu. Bye-bye.